You guys probably want me to review them, huh? Well, you're gonna have to wait. Let me enjoy these things first. Yeah, I didn't exactly enjoy them as much as you may think. The SH Mozarts line, if you're a Godzilla fan or a toy collector, you probably have heard of them before. The figures that they produce have great paying and sculpting and have a wide range of articulation. If you've seen someone review them, I wouldn't blame them. Because these things are like NECA figures, but for rich kids. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're perfect. Some figures come with plenty of accessories and are very nicely painted, while others are just plain, lackluster, and come with pretty much nothing. Heck, some of them are even debatable on whether or not they're good. And these things aren't cheap at all, they can range from either 60 to over $100. And in this case here, I feel as so I've gotten the short end of the stick. I'll explain what went wrong as we go forward. I'll first talk about Godzilla. Well, it's Legendary Godzilla, all right? The same as the one that came out in 2019. How many versions of this thing have there been? Heck, one of them was made out of freaking Gatorade. But out of all of them, I really do like this one in particular. The amount of detail on this thing is not bad. While a lot of people do oppose this, I really do like the paint applied to the eyes and mouth. They're really nicely done. There's no paint bleeding from the eyes, and Godzilla looked like he took a drink of that chug jug. Don't worry, I won't make that joke ever again. And I do love how they painted the dorsal spines. However, the shade of blue is kind of odd to me. I only remember seeing the shade of blue when he was attacking Pensacola. Now, in comparison to the 2019 figure, the articulation is pretty much the same. Everything is on a nice good ball joint, which provides a lot of posability and articulation. However, I will take the 2021 version over the 2019 version for one particular reason. While the tail is nice and poseable like the rest of the figure, the 2019's tail is not worth posing because it falls off at the base. This is why I find this thing to be a pain to pose. The joint that connects both the tail and the body is really weak as you can't really pose the tail without shifting the joint as well. But with the 2021's tail, I can pose this thing as much as I want to without worrying about anything falling off. Now, the only accessories that this figure comes with are a pair of alternate hands. You simply pop the other ones off and you put the other ones on. Now, this is one of the many occasions where a Godzilla figure doesn't come with a beam effect part, and I can kind of see why they didn't include it. One reason, in my opinion, is that the 2019 figure is shown shooting his atomic beam upright into the air. This is to recreate the resurrection scene from Godzilla King of the Monsters. However, in Godzilla vs. Kong, Godzilla is shown shooting downwards into the hollow earth. And in order to display it like that, you'd have to post the figure to point downwards. And while you can do that, the atomic breath part doesn't exactly fit into its mouth. Because of this, if you try posing it downwards, you might end up breaking it. Hey, wait a second, why couldn't they just create an effect part for that? On a side note, it is possible to use the alternate jaw part from the 2019 figure and use it for the 2021 figure, but I ain't risking anything breaking. And that's the 2021 Godzilla figure. Overall, I really like it. However, this is when things start going downhill. As much as this thing looks nice, there's one problem with it. The figure came defective. Yeah, my copy came with a mismatched part. He literally has two left feet. So I messaged my seller and told him that I needed a replacement part. But what I didn't expect to get was an entirely new figure. Yes, I am now the proud owner of two of these things. The difference? Well, there's a section of the tail that's a bit floppy and a little loose, and there's a paint mishap on the side of his body. But hey, at least this thing comes with two correct feet. When this thing arrived, it only came in its plastic case with no accessories inside of a plain brown box. But I ain't complaining. As long as it didn't have the aforementioned defect, I was fine with it. And that about covers my issues that I had with Godzilla. But Spino, you may be asking, where's the monkey? Where's our fun, lovable monkey? Well, how should I say this? He's dead. Oh boy. I have a lot of explaining to do. I know what you might be thinking. Did I finally lose it? Did I do this just to smite Kong fans? Well, actually, I really like this figure. So what happened? Well, for starters, I'll talk about what happened with his right leg. Much like the 2019 Godzilla's tail, the knee pops off very easily, and the thigh joint itself was very tight. To fix this, I got a Q-tip covered in dish soap and went around the joint to loosen it. This worked fairly well. However, things began to change when I went to the other leg. The thigh joint here was extremely tight and I couldn't find a way of applying the dish soap onto it. 
so I warmed up the figure to remove it. Unfortunately, as I was trying to pull the leg off of the joint, the joint itself broke off from the body. I then tried heating up the joint that connected both torsos together so I could remove it. However, that too also broke off. During this process, the plastic at the lower half of the body started to disform and warp due to how much heat I was applying to it. And about that joint that connected both torsos together, I absolutely hate this thing. This part was so tight that it couldn't even move. I tried heating it up with a hairdryer so I could remove it, but all it did was get the plastic really hot. Out of curiosity, I decided to go back with a Q-tip with dish soap and see if I could loosen up the joint a bit. It worked, but can only shift around very tightly. The worst part is, is that I was going to add dish soap to that spot in the first place. So I messaged my seller again and asked him if I could get any replacement parts. Sadly, he couldn't. What makes matters even worse is that I have not seen a single listing for any SH Monster Arts joints. You want an example of a figure that I did find a replacement part for? Here is the Figma Sakya Izayoi. While I was playing around with it, the joint that connected both her arm and her body broke off. But fortunately, I was able to find a replacement part online. I can kind of see why it broke in the first place. This figure is actually 10 years older than the SH Mozart's Cobb. But when that figure was released, the SH Mozart's line started out. So why couldn't they have released replacement parts by then? But Spino, why don't you use a 3D printer to print your part out? Ah uh, yes, yeah, something I don't own, nor do I have the knowledge to operate it. And due to how expensive it is, I might as well just buy another figure, because in comparison, that's cheaper. It's just upsetting, because in this instance here, the figure comes with a lot of accessories. But what's the point in using them if you can't even use the figure? On a side note, the figure comes with the axe, and while it does look nicely painted, the blade part of it feels very fragile so I don't like using it. Heck, it's bad enough that the figure itself is broken, so should I really be worried about it anyways? This is why, in my opinion, I like NECA figures more in a way, and say what you will about the pain and the articulation, at least it won't break if you force it too hard. Well, of course, there was one exception, being the 1995 Burning Godzilla, but hey, at least I didn't have to sell my kidneys in order to buy this thing. We needed Kong, but the world needed him the most. This this unfortunately makes me worried about future releases, such as the 2021 Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla Ultima. I bet this thing can't even strike this pose when it gets released, and I'm waiting to be proven wrong. Now look, don't look at this video as NECA propaganda. I really do like this line, and there are some figures in this line that I do want to get someday. I've always wanted to get the Heavy Arms Kiryu and Godzilla 2000 figures. Too bad I don't have enough money to get either of them, but if you ever have a tight joint in your figure, make sure that you find a way of lubricating it. Trust me, you really don't want to end up in a situation like this. I hope you enjoyed this PSA of sorts, and I'll see you guys in the next video, whenever that'll be. You know what I find funny about this thing the more I look at it? It reminds me of the 2019 Bandai Vinyl figure. I mean, just look at it. The eyes, the mouth, and the dorsal spines are painted in a light shade of blue while the rest of the body is colored in a dark gray. Heck, the only difference is that the SH Monster Arts figure has more articulation than the vinyl. Also, someone's probably going to ask if they could have the other SH Monster Arts figure. Now listen here, you chow. You're not getting a thing from me. I do whatever I want with these things. Now, if you may excuse me, I have more important things to attend to.